Hey everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, would you like to learn how you can minimize stress and maximize joy this holiday season? Well, have I got the guest for you. She's been on the show before. Her name is Jane Thurnell Reed, and she's going to talk to you how you can have these seven very practical strategies so that you can minimize stress and at the same time, maximize healthy eating while focusing on all the wonderful holiday festivities. Please welcome her back to the show. How are you? Thank you very much. It's lovely to be here again, particularly so close to the great festivities around Christmas and New Year. Yeah, so many people struggle with healthy eating in general, but even more so during the holidays where the junk food is even more prevalent. Yeah, yeah. It's a big problem, all that food that is there within easy reach. Well, I hope you're going to teach us what we can do to navigate these social situations that are upon us. Indeed, I will, yeah. Great. So, shall I start? Absolutely. Okay, so... Let's get going. A healthy lifestyle. Now, a healthy lifestyle involves eating healthily, exercising regularly, getting enough sleep. I talk about all those three in my own YouTube channel. Avoiding harmful substances like uh, tobacco, too much alcohol, um, recreational drugs, and so on. Reducing stress and improving your own mental health having healthy, loving, caring, supportive relationships. And also, as part of a healthy lifestyle, something that's been seen more and more in recent years is really important is to care about something bigger than yourself. Now, that thing that's bigger than yourself could be God or some other spiritual type experience. It could be caring about your community, a political party, Um, about some sort of activism, but it's something bigger than yourself. Now, I'm not going to cover all these seven tonight. So what I'm going to talk about is eating healthily. Now, the UN says maintaining a healthy weight, exercising regularly, following a healthy diet and not smoking seem to be associated with much as an 80% reduction in the risk of developing the most common and deadly chronic diseases. They're talking about things like type 2 diabetes, um, heart problems, respiratory problems, and so on. And if you look at this, there's two of these, maintaining a healthy weight and following a healthy diet. And that is really what this Chef AJ's channel is about. And it's also about what I'm talking to you about tonight. So Christmas, hmm. Maybe you will, at some point over the next few weeks, sit down to something like this. You might do it more than once. Um, It's just lots and lots of different foods. Now, I mean, if you're plant-based, you wouldn't actually have any of the meat, but you could still have lots and lots of food available. Maybe there's a lot of this sort of thing. Um, This is not a shelf in your house, I hope. But maybe you go into a store and choose all this stuff or somebody else chooses it and brings it into your house. Or you go to um, a party where somebody has provided all this food. Maybe somebody made something especially for you. I know you like it, so I've made it especially for you. And of course, often there's a lot of alcohol around and that can be really problematic as well. I mean, it can be problematic in terms of the number of calories and also in terms of the long term detrimental effects of alcohol on you. And then we have maybe family celebrations and they are often times of joy, laughter, love, but they can also be times of real stress when you're together with relatives, maybe that you feel you don't have much in common with or people with, that you've argued with in the past, people who irritate you. Maybe when you go home to mom and dad, you feel like a child again and don't like that feeling. So the, though it can be a time of joy, it can also be a, a time of a lot of stress and therefore often a lot of comfort eating as too. Now, coupled along with all that um, Christmas type stuff, all that abundance of food, and usually it's not healthy food, 
you will have probably some of this going on. So it's the normal day-to-day -day stuff, that, you know, the, the emails that need answering, the children that are arguing. And in fact, at Christmas and New Year, children often argue even more because they tend to be uh, given a lot of sugary treats and then they can be really hyped up and then they get into arguments and uh, are difficult. Maybe in the pressure cooker that is um, Christmas and New Year, you end up arguing with your partner um, and so on. So there's all this going on. So is it any wonder that people find it difficult at this time? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm just recovering from a cough, so. <laughs> right, there's this survey, which was actually came out about a week ago. <laughs> and they asked, they asked respondents about Christmas. Um, and this is what they got. Two thirds said they overindulge in food. A third admit they drink more alcohol during the holidays. Nearly 45. <laughs> oh, dear, excuse me. I know it always happens. It's like when, whenever we're live, that happens to me, too. Don't worry about it. Nearly four, 45 percent said they take a break from exercise and more than half report feeling tired and having less time for themselves. And these are what people actually admitted to. There's a good chance that actually the numbers are much higher than this. And remember, Christmas is supposed to be a happy time, but more than half report feeling tired and having less time for themselves. So, <coughs> oh dear. You have any like, um something like tea or something that can I mean water I'm just drinking I'll keep on drinking water and hope that will be okay <gasps> oh. does it matter if you give in to all or most of it it may affect your physical health you can end up with hangovers upset tummy poor sleep and so on so actually you're less able to enjoy the festivities it may affect your emotions you feel ashamed overwhelmed, out of control, because you're not managing your food intake, even though you want to. It may affect your mental health. It can lead to mood swings and irritability. We know more and more now that there's a link between food and mood. Um, we don't actually understand exactly how that works, but there's a definite link. So if you're eating ultra processed food, even if it's plant-based, even if it's vegan, then it can lead to mood swings and irritability. And perhaps the most important thing is that it may be difficult to get back to doing the right thing once the festivities are over. Most people gradually put on weight as they get older, and that's not good, but it happens to most people. And for some people, what happens is every time they're on holiday, every time they have some festivities, they put on a pound or two pounds and they don't lose it again. It stays. So they never get it off. So gradually each year they're putting on two, four pounds and it just keeps on and on. So I'm going to give you seven different strategies. So keep things simple. Using a percentage. Halt. I'll explain what that means in a minute. Batch flower remedies. Dealing with unhelpful people. These are often your loved ones, of course, who can be very unhelpful at times like this. Preventing holiday weight gain and writing it down. So let's look at keep it simple. There's lots of research that showed the more complicated you make your diet, the less likely you are to stick to it. And I'm not talking, when I say diet here, I'm not talking about just in terms of losing weight. I'm talking about a, your healthy eating plan, whatever it is, keep it simple. And this also applies, of course, at Christmas. So I'm going to give you some suggestions. And these are only suggestions. You will probably come up with your own that fit your own circumstances. So one of them is only eat sitting down. That tends to reduce snacking. 
if you're only going to eat sitting down. But if you're going to go to lots of buffets over the um, the holiday season, um, then you'll be forced to eat standing up. But you could could then decide, I'll only snack when I'm sitting down. You can decide to pig out on certain designated days, but eat normally <coughs> the rest of the time. You can go for a long run on the days you overeat or know you're going to overeat. I, I, I'm a bit hesitant about suggesting that because um, I think it's really important we don't just associate exercise with burning calories and with weight loss. There's a lot more uh, benefits of exercise than just that. You could decide that when you're responsible for a meal, you'll always include fruit or salad or soup or vegetables as a first course. Again, there's evidence that says if people eat the uh, things like fruit and salad, soups and vegetables to begin with, they then eat less of the other food later on. So you can try that. Now, when we're talking about salads, we're not talking about a pasta salad or a rice salad. We're talking about salad leaves, tomatoes, the vegetables that are high in water, have a high water content. The same for the soup. It's not a thick chowder. It's more like a vegetable soup with lots of good veggies in it. You could decide that all through the holiday season, you're going to alternate alcohol and water. So you'd have, for example, a glass of wine, then a glass of water, then another glass of wine. That's been shown to actually cut down the amount people drink. It also means you feel a lot better the next day because you're not totally dehydrated. Another one would be to eat an all breakfast every day during the holiday season and not worry so much about the other days. This is perhaps a really minimal thing to do, but it's better than doing nothing. So um, this would only work, of course, if it's normal to eat a healthy breakfast. So first possibility is keep it simple. Make yourself a rule. You're going to stick to that rule, come what may, but make it a simple rule that you can express very simply in just one sentence. This is what I'm going to do. And you can say what it is really, really simply. Okay, the second one is the percentage concept. And don't worry if you're not good, good at maths and have a, only a hazy idea of what percentages are. So what is the ideal diet for you? Now, I describe an ideal diet as being the right food. So um, minimum processed food, lots of fruit and veggies, et cetera, in the right amount. So you're not eating excessive amounts at the right time. And there's... Um, more and more interesting research coming out about the time of eating. And uh, there's some research I was looking at last week, which showed that if you eat, normally eat within two hours of going to bed, you're more likely to, you increase your risk of prostate and breast cancer. I mean, who, who would have thought of that? So if you normally go to bed at 11, then you need to have finished eating by nine o'clock in the evening. So the right food in the right amounts at the right time and in the right way. So that's chewing, not rushing it, not doing something else at the same time. So the ideal diet, of course, is 100%. So what is your diet right now? Is it 80%? the right food in the right amounts at the right time in the right way. So how close are you to that? Are you to that now? So eating the right food, eating the right amount, eating in the right way and eating at the right time. <coughs> so I'm not suggesting here you do some detailed analysis, um, but overall, what do you think? your percentage is right now? Is it 80%? Is it 85%? Is it 90%? Just give yourself some sort of figure. Okay, and then what do you do at Christmas? So, is do, doing better? Is this realistic? For some people, it actually is. For people who are, maybe it's a couple who are going to be on their own, 
they normally have hectic jobs, but now they're on their own over the Christmas period. So they can spend time um, watching Chef AJ's videos and cooking some of the marvelous recipes. Um, so they actually have a chance to actually eat better. But for most people, that's not what's going to happen. Is staying at the same percentage realistic? Maybe it is, but maybe it's not. Is it better to drop your percentage by a predetermined amount on predetermined days or for a set period? So, for example, you'd say, I'm really sorry, I thought I was going to be okay for this evening, but uh, it seems like I'm, my cough has decided to come back. Oh, sorry. Um, so, is it better to drop your percentage by a predetermined amount? So, you could say that whenever I'm at my mother's, Instead of being what I am now, which is normally 80%, I'll go for being 70% or 65%. Or um, Christmas Day, the day after, and the two days I'm going to parties, I will drop to 50%, but the rest of the time I'm going to stay at my normal percentage. So that's the way it would work. You need to decide if you're going to do drop it, how much, and you need to review that regularly to make sure that that is actually what you're doing. So that's the second one. Now, the third one is called HALT. And HALT stands for hungry, angry, lonely, and tired. There's research which has shown that um, if people say to them, when you're reaching for a snack, if you go to yourself, HALT, am I hungry, am I angry? Am I lonely or am I tired? And of course, the only time you should eat is if the answer is I'm hungry. If you're angry, you need to do something about it. If you're lonely, you need to do something about it. And if you're tired, then maybe you need to sleep or actually eat something that's going to help sustain you, which isn't something sugary, which will shoot you up and drop you down again. Now, HALT is a very convenient thing, but, but for some people, actually, it's more like ha blah, 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 blah. So this gives you, I've put in four additional ones here in green, habit, anxious, bored, and as a reward. And it's most people will have some default one. For me, I eat when I'm bored. And I also eat as a, as a reward much more than the others. Um, when I'm tired, I usually actually go to bed. Um, but uh, And I don't really eat very much out of habit. A lot of people are habitual eaters. So, you know, after lunch, I always have a biscuit and uh, a cookie and, some, and, and, and a cup of coffee. Or every evening, this is what I do. Or it, at 11 o'clock in the morning, I stop work and eat something or other. So it's not actually thinking about, am I actually hungry? And like the first four, the only time that you eat is if the answer is, I'm hungry. If it's habit, or you're angry, or you're anxious, or you're bored, or you're lonely, or it's a reward, or you're tired then you don't eat. One of the po most popular blogs on my, on my website is one I wrote about 25 ways to reward yourself without using um, food or alcohol. So if, if you find that normally what you're doing is rewarding yourself, you need to find things you can do which don't involve, involve food or alcohol and can reward yourself. The fourth one is batch flower remedies. Um, people sometimes say to me, I'm pronouncing it wrongly, and it's Bach flower remedies. Um, it actually isn't. Um, I have a, a pamphlet from the original Bach, Bach Center, and they, in it, asked, you know, there was a question and answer section. It's how do you pronounce it? And it was, do you pronounce it as Bach, as though it's spelled B A T C H? So, for those of you who don't know about the Bach flower remedies, these are 38 different remedies which are made from the flowers of trees. They're very natural. You can get them online and also from some health shops. 
And a university in Brazil did some work on binge eating. They had two groups of people. One was given a placebo and the other group was given these six remedies. Um, they were put in a dropper bottle and they were taken every day for, I can't remember how long, I think it might have been a month or maybe longer. And what they found was that there was in, an improvement in anxiety, sleep patterns and binge eating from taking these six remedies. Now, each flower remedy has a different, is useful for different psychological states. So empathiens is for tension and anxiety, white chestnut for repetitive thoughts, cherry plum for impulsive or compulsive attitudes. So that would be useful if you're obsessed with some particular food and are always thinking about it and wanting to eat it. Chicory is for control and possessiveness and dislike of being on your own. Crab apple for inaccurate perceptions, including your own self-image. So this is very good if people feel disgusted with how they look or how you behave and so on. And pine for feelings of guilt and regret. So one group was given these six remedies and the other group was given a placebo. And the group that was given these six remedies they found an improvement in anxiety, sleep patterns, and also binge eating. Now, I said there were 38 remedies and other possible remedies that might apply at Christmas. Uh, there's agrimony for people who are the life and soul of the party. These are often overweight people who are really cheerful and appear really cheerful and happy on the surface and are always there handing out the cookies, handing out the cakes, handing things out, making sure everybody's happy and enjoying themselves. And often they use food to suppress emotions. So they eat, overeat. Um, so if that's you, agrimony may be for you. Water violet is for a desire to be alone. And at Christmas, being alone can be really difficult if that's what you want, if you're surrounded by family members, parties, and so on, because that's what other people want to do, then it can be very difficult if your natural way of being is to be alone, to be on your own. Um, so, um, so then you can be more anxious and so on, and then overeat because of that. Beach is for intolerance of others, and at Christmas you can get people get very can get very intolerant of others because everybody's supposed to have a perfect Christmas. And if you find that you're intolerant of others, then you can, um, beach would be a good remedy. And remember, what, if we go back to halt, angry was one of the reasons that people eat. So if you're intolerant of others and angry, then you could be uh, reaching for whatever it is, something totally unsuitable to eat. Elm for being overwhelmed by responsibilities. Some people end up either through choice or by accident as the person that does everything, get, buys all the presents, sends all the cards, makes sure everybody else is happening, happy. And that can be completely overwhelming. Um, holly is for strong emotions such as anger and jealousy. And often we know, sadly, Christmas time can be a time of a lot of anger jealousy, envy, just those strong emotions, strong negative emotions. And again, they can lead to overeating and so on. So holly would be a suitable remedy. And red chestnut for overconcern for others if you're always fussing and um, worrying about other people. So how do you take them? You take two drops, there's different ways of taking them. The simplest way is to take two drops of each selected remedy in a glass of water. You can take four, five, six remedies if you want to, or just one remedy. And sip, if you have it in the glass of water, put two drops from the dropper bottle, they come in, and sip as and when you require through the day. Now, that's the best way to take them if this is a one-off event. But if you feel you're going to have problems all through the holiday season, then you can make up a personal mix of remedies. You put two drops of each in a dropper bottle. You can usually get a dropper bottle from a pharmacy or somewhere. And then you take four drops at least four times a day. So you could have three, four, five, six of these batch, 38 batch flower remedies. 
And another way of doing it is to take two drops of a remedy directly under the tongue and repeat if necessary. Again, that's more in a sort of an emergency situation. If you know what's going to happen and what you're going to be like over Christmas, then I would really recommend you making up a personal mix of remedies. And there's a particular mix of remedies that's called rescue remedy. And if you use that, you use four drops. Yeah, I've, t- t- I've taken that one and I've actually been instructed by veterinarians that I could even put it in my pet's water when they're anxious. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Rescue Remedy is, is absolutely brilliant. When my, when my children were small, we, we used it all the time. You know, if they fell, if something happened or whatever. And, um, you know, if one of them fell over, the, uh, the other one would go, where's the Rescue Remedy? Where's the Rescue Remedy? <laughs> and go running around looking for it. In the end, I had a bottle of rescue remedy in nearly every every room of the house <laughs> just to make sure that every... But you can use it for pets. You can use any of these remedies for pets. You can use them for pet rabbits, cats, dogs, horses, whatever. Um, you find the right remedies based on on the animal's temperament. And the rescue remedy is the remedy for, um, it's a really good general first aid type remedy. So when an animal is, if an animal is particularly anxious or has been hurt or frightened, then you could use it then. So yeah, great. So number five is dealing with unhelpful people. And as I said, right at the beginning, often at Christmas and New Year, around these holidays, this holiday time, the, um, the people who are unhelpful are our nearest and dearest who say things like, oh, come on, it's Christmas, you know, don't be so miserable, have another slice of cake, you know, have another beer, you know, or whatever. Um, And there's often an unspoken thing going on because they actually want more um, and want you to join in so then they can actually almost blame you for encouraging them to drink or eat. So the whole dynamic of that can actually be really difficult. And I want to suggest two ways of dealing with it. The first one is ending a sentence on a falling intonation. Now, I first came across this many years ago, and I don't know if this happens in the US, but it, uh, in the UK, we went through a time when people, you'd get endless phone calls from people trying to sell you insurance policies or you know, all sorts of different things. And you'd say things like, you know, no, I'm not interested. And they'd go, oh, um, aren't you interested in finding out how you could save yourself, you know, £2,000 or something? No, I'm not interested. And they would go on and on and on. And um, I, I heard somebody say that the best way to get rid of these people is to end a sentence on a falling intonation. Um, and I'll explain what that is in a minute. Anyway, I decided I'd try it. And about, so I practiced saying it. And it, about two days later, so this I had another one of these nuisance calls. And the person phoned up and I said that I wasn't interested using this particular intonation. And he just said, oh, right, and put the phone down. And I was really, really surprised. So you can use this in all sorts of situations, but it's particularly useful now when people are encouraging us to eat and drink things that we may not want to do. And it's a way of ending the conversation. And what you, what you, what you do is you let the sentence die. That's how I always think about it. So, in, you know, somebody says to you, have another slice of cake. And instead of saying, no, I don't want any, in an exasperated voice, you say, no, thank you, I'm full, or no, thank you, I don't want any. And I'm exaggerating slightly, but the end of the sentence is going down and dying. You're, I always think of it when I'm doing it, I always think I'm burying the end of the sentence in the ground. And if you may need to do that several times, but if you keep doing it, and I suggest you practice before you get into the situation, it can really stop people in their tracks. So you've got, what you're doing is you're saying the sentence and then you're letting it die at the end. So your voice drops slightly and the energy of the words drops as well. And um, so do give that a try. It's, it's amazingly 
um, effective beyond anything I ever expected when I first heard about it. So if you're thinking, oh, I don't can't see how this can work, do give it a go, please. And the other one is use this phrase, just humor me. When you get into arguments with people, oh, go on, have another piece of cake. No, I don't want it. Oh, why, why won't you eat it? It's Christmas. You know, you're always being difficult and, and it gets into this argument. Um, and both people are determined to be right. And that then becomes a whole sort of power dynamic and all sorts of things. But if you use the phrase, just humor me, then you're not saying I'm right and you're wrong. You're not saying agree with me. You're just saying, just humor me. You know, so, no, I, d I don't want any more cake now. Thanks. Just humor me. Again, it's surprisingly effective, and you can use it in all sorts of other situations, of course, as well. But it is very much um, a phrase which takes a lot of the energy and the conflict out of the situation because you're not saying I'm right and you're wrong um, or anything like that at all. You're just saying, just humor me. And you won't work every time, but it will work sometimes without a doubt. So have a practice and see how that one goes too. Now, preventing holiday weight gain. I said at the beginning that people often put on small amounts of weight and they never get it off again. So it may be important if that's you to prevent holiday weight gain. And again, there's research on what works. And these two things work. Self-monitoring, weighing yourself, preferably every day. I know for some people that's difficult or impossible because it just sets up a whole load of um, emotional, mental things. But for a lot of people, it is possible. And remember what you're looking for is a trend you want your weight to sort of stay like that. You don't want it going up or gradually going up. So self-monitoring, weighing yourself and taking physical exercise. Um, it was interesting, that study I said right at the beginning, I think it was something like 45% said they stopped taking exercise during the, during the holiday season. It's actually more important for you. And remember that study also said that people were tired and felt they didn't have enough time for themselves. So we often say, oh, I'm going to eat what I want and enjoy myself. I'm not going to go to the gym. You know, it's the holiday. I'm going to enjoy myself. But in fact, what happens if you do eat everything and you don't exercise, the chances are you won't enjoy yourself that much for all the reasons I've already said. The seventh thing is to write it down, write down everything you eat and drink. That again has been shown, it helps people moderate what they do. You need to be um, really um, honest with yourself. On the rare occasions I do this, I've sometimes, I, I think, oh, I can't be bothered to write that down. So I end up not eating it. Um, and they ha it has been shown that if you have to write everything down, you do end up eating less. Mm -hmm. So you, could, you can do it on paper the old fashioned way on a phone, tablet or a laptop, or you could use an app to write things down. So seven dis different strategies, which one or ones will you choose? Remember what you have to do is choose it and commit to it. This is what I'm going to do. I'm not going to worry about the rest. I'm going to do this. So keeping things simple, that's making yourself a simple rule. This is what I will do on certain days or every day or whatever, using a percentage, which may be allowing your diet to drop a bit um, rather than letting it get out of control and drop and um, losing it completely. Then there's the halt. Am I really hungry or is something else going on? The batch flower remedies. I've listed uh, 12 in what I've said, but there are others. There's 38 of them all together. Plus, as Chef AJ said, the um, batch flower remedy, uh, the rescue remedy. So you've got a lot of choice um, and you can find the right ones for you. There's lots of information on the web about that. Dealing with unhelpful people, that downward intonation or saying, just humor me. Preventing, uh, preventing holiday weight gain that's 
weigh yourself every day, keeping an eye on your weight and exercising. And the seventh one is writing everything you eat and drink down. So which one or ones of these will you choose? It's totally up to you, but I hope you'll give this a go and find one or more of them. So what's next? Commit to one or more of these strategies, obviously. In January, I'm going to do two more free videos on healthy eating. And uh, you'd need to sign up for those that they're not part of uh, Chef AJ's show. Um, I'm going to start uh, in February. I'll be starting an eight week love healthy eating online course. Now, Chef AJ has loads of fantastic recipes and guests who do amazing food. This course won't, won't be about any of that. It's, it will be very much about how to become a natural healthy eater so that you want healthy food, that when you're upset, when you're um, angry, when, you're, um, when the family dynamics are all adrift, that you don't reach for unhealthy food. You actually naturally reach for healthy food. So that, I'll be starting that in February. The links to all that are in the show notes in, in the description of this uh, live. And I'd like to just make a, a plea for Veganuary. I'm a trustee for Veganuary, Veganuary, which is the Go Vegan in January movement. Um, we are we started in the UK, but now we're getting big in the US. Thank goodness. And um, we really want people, even if you're plant based vegan. We really want people to sign up for Veganuary because what that does is it tells the politicians, it tells all the companies that the, there are people looking for vegan food. There is a big movement of interest in it. So if you sign up for Veganuary, you get 31 days of, um, of emails with lots of recipes and uh, interesting information as well. Um, I've got two weight loss books. One is 190 weight loss hacks. That's looking at the evidence for um, simple, easy things you can do to get that weight off. I was talking to somebody recently. He said, I, I, I kept your book on, on a table in my living room and I'd look at it most days and I ended up losing 10 pounds without actually trying. So <laughs> it's that sort of book, which is great. And then I've done a book on menopause weight loss as well. And you can connect with me. I've got a YouTube, which is at Thriving Jane. Instagram, which is also at Thriving Jane. My Instagram is mainly uh, pictures of me in the gym. I've got a blog, janethurnellread.com. And of course, you can always email me, jane at janethurnellread.com. So that's it. And I'd be really happy to answer any questions. I'm really sorry about my cough. I thought I was over it and I would be OK. So I'm, I hope that hasn't detracted too much. You know what they say? It's not the cough that carries you off. It's the coffin they carry you off in. <laughs> not um, yet. Not I'm yet. just kidding. All right. Well, that, that was great. You know, a lot of these strategies are helpful, even if it's not a holiday, just when people... Yeah you know, go to a party or go to a restaurant. I mean, there's just certain things that, that they could do if they think about him in advance, you know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I just think they're hit with so many more poor food choices this time of year with all the, you know, the special food that was made just for them. Yes. Yes. So it does make it difficult for people. I know. So that's why you need the strategies. Absolutely. I think I think that's fantastic. And, you know, you talked about um, the Bach flower remedies and I've heard about them. And I know there's certain people that 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 like they're practitioners of that. And one of the things I'm wondering if you've heard of is essential oils, because I've heard that can sometimes help people in an eating situation, like certain ones like clove, for example, if they if they swish it around their mouth, it kind of numbs their tongue and the food doesn't taste good, you know, things like that. Yeah, I mean, essential oils have been, a peppermint oil is very good. And, um, you know, some people find if they um, just uh, brush their teeth with um, a strong peppermint toothpaste, that will actually reduce your appetite for a while. That's a good idea. Or even, you know, I think if you go, if you eat before you go, it's, it's, you're less likely to do such severe damage. When people are hungry, that's when the pleasure trap really rears its ugly head because you're you're actually hungry for for food yeah 
Yeah. I I never found that work for me in the days when I wasn't eating healthily. I'd eat before I went to the party and then I just still and then you still ate through the party. Well, that's that's so interesting. <laughs> um Vicky says, have you heard of Australian bush flower essences? Yeah. Um, I mean, as well as the batch flower remedies, there are Australian bush en- uh, essences, there's um, Maui essences, there's um, Pacific, I think it's, oh dear, I'm trying to think, Pacific flower remedies. Uh, Edward Bach was the original person who developed flower remedies. He um, he had the sense of what, um, he would he he was originally uh, he was trained as a doctor became a homeopath and then became really interested in people's emotional states and how emotional states relate to physical problems and um so he was the original flower remedy maker and then since um flower remedies have been made in other countries some people say you're better off with the flower remedies from your own country um i'm i'm not sure that's true i mean the, the the particular study i quoted there was from brazil and they were using the batch flower remedies which come from england um so yeah i'm i i but certainly the australian um flower remedies are very good there's indigo essences in from ireland which are for, uh, often used for children and are were developed for children so there's lots of different ones. Nice, nice. Or they could just use some other people's strategies that they just stay home. <laughs> yeah. If it, if it proves too much, the temptation. Okay. Um, did Oh, Suzanne says, did you do any special trainings in back flower remedies? Can you self-diagnose and safely purchase them at the health food store? Yeah, no, I've never been trained. I used to be a complementary therapist, but not a batch flower um, therapist. Um, but I've been using them for hmm, 40, 50 years, I guess now. And um, I'm finding them really useful. They're very, very safe to use. If you use the wrong one, it wouldn't be a problem. So there's no, it's, they're not like drugs in that sense. You know, you don't have to. It's it kind of like homeopathy in a bit, in a way. Well, uh, sort of. Yeah. I mean, the way they're made is most of them are made was that he would um, take a bowl of um, spring water and put the flowers of the tree, float the flowers in in the bowl with sunlight on them. And then he would throw the flowers away and take the water. And then he would bottle the water with brandy as a preservative. And that's what was used. Now, you know, I mean, it sounds complete hocus pocus, but, you know, they work really well. I've, they work for children. They work for animals. They work for in all sorts of different situations. So they're very safe to use. Um, if you just... Um, you know, if you go on online, you can search batch flower remedies or flower remedies generally, and you'll find lots of information. Um, if you're interested in it for a particular thing, you could try flower remedies for binge eating or flower remedies for um, lack of confidence. You know, you could do a search like that. But there are 38 basic ones, and you can just understand those. And the Australian ones that one of your uh, one of the people mentioned. The Australian remedies, they are also, you know, if you do a search, you will also see that there is a, what's called a repertory, which is the name of the flower remedy and then the psychological state that's associated with it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Diana says, do they have natural remedies for things like ADHD? She has a granddaughter on psychotropic meds. Um, I would I would urge her to look at the end. You can use... You can use any flower remedies, but also a possibility is to look at the indigo essences. They're in, they're, they're in Ireland. I, I don't know whether they um, whether they she'll be able to get them where she is, but um, yeah. And she's asking if there's a natural remedy for sleep. Um, it 
In terms, in terms of the, the flower remedies, I mean, it depends why you can't sleep. If you've got persistent thoughts going round and round in your head, then that would indicate one particular flower remedy. If you're lying there grinding your teeth because you're really angry with your spouse because once again he's left his dirty washing all over the floor or, or she's left her dirty washing all over the floor or whatever, then it would be a different remedy. So there isn't... The flower remedies don't work like conventional remedies, you, uh, you know, drugs work where this drug suits this problem. You're looking at the psychological state behind whatever's going on. Nice. Thank you. There's a question about your exercise. Just yeah. saw it a second ago. Somebody asked, where did it go? Oh, yes. Linda says, how often do you go to the gym and what is your exercise regimen? I go to the gym three times a week and I weight train. I weight train heavy. Um, you know, I lift heavy weights. Um, I get furious because I see women come to our gym and often they're two friends and they spend the time while they're working out catching up with each other. You know, so they're not really paying attention to what they're doing. They're not really working hard enough. So I go three times a week for about 50 minutes. Um, and, you know, I do deadlifting where you're lifting um, a bar up off the ground. And I would do, you know, 50 kilos, which is what, 120 pounds. Um, you know, lift that off the ground maybe eight times. I use... Um, 20 pound dumbbells and so on for lots of the things I do. I also use my bike as my main form of exercise. And so I bike about 40 to 50 miles a week as well. And I think as you get older, weight training is more and more important. I could spend 10 hours telling you about the benefits of weight training. And um, that's mainly what I post. I post little gym videos on Instagram. Um, to try and encourage other people to, um, you know, to, to work out. And it does seem to work. You know, people do send me, send me uh, messages going, oh, I love you. I'm going to go back to the gym. I hadn't realized you could do, you know, you could work out when you, you're your age and stuff like that. You know, so that's great. That's great. What rules <laughs> or boundaries have you set for yourself this holiday season? Because you talked about different strategies in your talk. Do any of them particularly resonate with you? Well, well, mine is very much going to be around um, not worrying about what I eat on certain days. So actually, I, you know, so it's that, that the first one, which is keep it simple, which is going to be that on certain days, I'll eat whatever I like. I won't worry about it. And in fact, when you actually give yourself permission to eat whatever you like, you often actually end up eating less. You know, it's that I'm not allowed to have this that can actually trigger you into, I'm going to eat it anyway, I'm going to eat it anyway. Once you give yourself permission, on this day, I can eat anything I like. It doesn't matter if I eat sugary food for the whole day, if that's what I want to do, that's what I'm going to, I will do that. But actually, when you give yourself that sort of level of permission, really give yourself it, very often you actually don't do it. Um, but it needs to be on set days. It's not for the whole 10. I don't know about in, in, in the US, but in the UK, you know, Christmas seems to start on about the 23rd of December and goes through to the 2nd of January and people eat the whole time. I'm not going to do that. It will yeah, be set exactly. days. But do you ever worry about people that are really like they identify as processed food addicts and, you know, sometimes just one or two bites off plan, it can be a disaster for them. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, there's some interesting, I, I did a YouTube video, video on this is your brain on yogurt. Um, because there was some interesting research done with using a high-fat, high-sugar yogurt. And um, the people were giving, I think it was eight weeks, so they had the high-fat, high-sugar high yogurt twice a day for eight weeks, and they did brain scans before and at the end of the eight weeks. And people's, uh, the reward centers of the brain 
had changed in the people who'd had the high fat, high sugar yogurts. The one, the other one, the other group that hadn't, that had had the same number of calories, but not in that high fat, high sugar format, actually didn't put up, didn't, didn't have that change in the reward centers of the brain. So the re, the reward centers of the brain were, were lighting up in the face of um, the, you know, sugary, fatty foods. So there clearly are people who get very addicted to it. And, and as you say, for them, if you know that's what you like, then saying I'm going to eat sugar for a whole day is not a good strategy. Not a but good for idea. me, you know, I can do that. I know I can do that. I could. Eat, I, I probably wouldn't do it for the whole day because I'd be after a while. I'd be like, oh, I feel sick. Give me a salad. Um, so you have to know yourself and know how you are around food. Yeah. Absolutely. That old adage, know thyself. Yeah. Uh, Kess says, thank you so much, Chef AJ, for all you do to promote healthy eating. Super fan from Nigeria. Thank you. Wait, oh. I'll just ring the bell anyway. I'm supposed to ring that for super fans. Yes. <laughs> nice. Well, what do you have planned for the holidays? Well, I, we're not going to do a great deal, I don't think. We're having actually quite a quiet one this year. So... Um... I, sh- I, I mean, I, I will still be riding my bike. I'll still be going to the gym some of the time, not all of the time. Um, I'm pro- we're probably going to have a traditional nut roast because that's what we have in our family on Christmas Day ever since I became veg- I was vegetarian for 45 years before I became vegan. So, um, you know, it's a real tradition to have a, a, a nut roast. I used to put eggs and other stuff in them. And of course, now I don't. Um, so we'll have a nut roast with lots of great stuff and things. And some chocolate, because I, I like chocolate, but not not lots. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it sounds like you're able to moderate. Well, this was a great presentation. I hope people will watch it again if they have any questions. And if they want to contact you, is the best way through your website or social media? So, social media is probably good, yeah. Yeah. Or, or just email me, jane at com. Nice. Is, yeah. Nice. Well, thank and you. I'm just, sorry about my cough. Well, you can't help <laughs> it. That's okay. You, I think you did great. And it was just a very, it's just, it's, it, but even if you, that, it always seems to happen when you're presenting though. Anyway. I thought I was over it and I thought I'm going to be okay. So yeah. Well, it was still great. So thank you so much again. It was okay. nice seeing you again. Happy holidays to you. And to you. And and keep up all that great work that well, you do. Thank I you. will do my best. Thank you. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow at 11 a.m. Pacific time for Dr. Mahima Gulati. She's a triple board certified plant-based physician in endocrinology, diabetes, and metabolism, and a lifestyle medicine doctor. She's going to talk about common hormonal disorders like hypothyroidism, PCR, PCOS, and low testosterone. 